Hello, welcome to the Coming of Modern Man. We are playing Blue Red Wizards or Lightning Wizard. Um, and uh, this is our opening hand. We are playing against Mono Green Tron, I believe. Didn't know that at the time. Um, I think we end up keeping this hand, although it is pretty slow. It leaves off with Urza's Mine into Expedition Map. And yeah, I think. We're regretting our choice to uh, to keep this hand. Fetch here, just to thin out our deck. Throw a lightning bolt at our opponent's face. Um, it was kind of unnecessary, to be quite honest, but... Just wanting to drop our opponent's life total as fast as possible. Second expedition map means our opponent's going to have Tron next turn, which obviously is an issue. I'm going to play Adeliz and attack with our Soul Scar Mage and the Adeliz to put our opponent down to 14. I'm going to put together Tron, place Ugin, uh, which is pretty awful for us. Um, it's going to be able to remove both our creatures here, which is a big problem. So we draw into Serum Visions, find a Storm Chaser Mage and a bunch of creatures on top as well. We able to kill off Ugin here. So have to see what happens next. But that has Khan. She's not the best against us, to be honest. Uh, which is obviously nice. We able to play Monastery Swift Spear. Kill off the Khan. Attack for two. Put our down to twelve. Put the Sylvan Scryings into Expedition Map into another expedition map. We've got all the lands in the world at this moment in time. I'm going to to stack for four here. I'm actually giving out. Oh no, I'm going to be able to stack for six. Plus the wizard lightning. I'm going to put it all the way down to three. This looks like Ulamog. Um, yes, <laughs> our opponent has Ulamog to follow up that. Um, and then can use uh, as a Sanctum to find something else. Uh, we have another Storm Chaser, so we can attack for one here, but it's uh, not quite enough. Opponent puts down to ten. There's a second Ulamog um, and exiles. Our creature and our land, and uh, we draw become immense. So um, a lot closer than uh, it could have been, uh, to be quite honest. Um, I think we did pretty impressively, and this does show some versatility of the deck. Uh, we actually managed to kill off two planeswalkers here, Ugin and Khan, uh, and we almost won through an Ulamog, uh, which is pretty nifty. Um, but yeah, um, it didn't exactly go our way. Um, we could have won here, I suppose, if we'd drawn a Lightning Bolt at the end or, or a Wizard's Lightning. We could have just hard cast that and, uh, and won the game. Um, so we did have outs, um, but ultimately we succumbed to the uh, ridiculous manner of our opponent uh, and uh, having to kill off two Planeswalkers and uh, deal with an, two Ulamogs uh, was a bit too much uh, for us on this occasion. So here we are with the sideboard uh, against Mono Green Tron. So uh, I think we need to be conscious that our opponent probably has Worm Coil engines. So I think Vapor Snag is probably the best answer to those. Um, so we probably want to be bringing those in. It's slightly awkward because it's kind of a dead card unless our opponent plays a creature. But at the same time, Worm Coil engine is just awful for us. Um, so I think we probably want to bring it in. We could bring in Destructive Revelry. Um, I don't know about bringing in all the copies, uh, to be honest, because it is expensive and requires green mana. Um, so I'm unsure about it, to be quite honest. Um, I think we probably want to bring in some number of them, I guess. Um, but it is a slightly awkward card in the deck, just because of how much it costs uh, and the fact that it requires green mana. Um, we could bring in Wizard's Retort, in theory, to counter 
some of their bigger spells, but I think that's just too slow and a bit clunky. Um, and really, we're not going to be the control deck in this matchup. Um, so, yeah, I think we want to bring some of the artifact destruction and probably the Vapor Snags to deal with uh, potential Worm Coil engines. Um, in terms of cards we bring out, again, I think we probably just want to be as fast as possible. So I think probably the Snapcasters are the cards that want to go here. Um, and then you can maybe look at cutting Adelis, maybe. Um, all the other cards seem fine and they're fairly good. Obviously, we just want to be aggressive as possible, win as fast as possible. Um, and I think Snapcaster is possibly just too slow for that particular uh, detail. So that's probably the card you want to be cutting uh, on this occasion. Um, alternatively, I suppose Artful Dodge is possibly not overly necessary um, because they don't run a lot of creatures. Uh, and uh, the ones they do are probably going to be attacking us uh, to kill us. So, uh, yeah, I suppose Artful Dodge is another card we could consider cutting here. Um, and that's where you can probably find space for your Vapor Snags slash Destructive Revelries um, as well. Okay, so here we have a game two. Um, this sounds pretty good. Soul Scar Mage into Storm Chaser Mage, um, a bunch of Cantrips and Snapcaster. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, obviously, we're going to be on a play here, so that works out quite nicely. It's the kind of aggressive hand we want. Uh, opponent plays an expedition map off an Urza's Mine. So, we're potentially looking at turn 3 Tron from our opponent, uh, which is a concern. Kind of a fetch. Um, get a uh, Steam Vents. Two power plant, so yeah, we are going to be seeing turn three Tron uh, from opponent. So hopefully, don't see anything too ridiculous. Uh, going to serum visions here. Get our prowess triggers. You find a monastery Swiss spear, a snapcaster mage, and a spire buff canal on the top. Uh, I don't think we really want Snapcaster Mage. Uh, I don't think we need a fourth land either. Um, so I think we're probably bottoming both of these. My stomping ground here into the Monastery Swiss Spear. Then we can opt. Another land, uh, which again we're going to bottom. See what we get. The comments, uh, that's very good. Um, and should hopefully be able to wrap us up the game. Um, obviously, dependent on uh, what our opponent brings to the table. But uh, with seven mana, we're looking at more like Khan or Worm Coil Engine. Um, and both those cards we can actually kill up past uh, with these uh, cards we've got in hand. So. Feeling pretty good about the situation as it stands, so we can attack here. And I guess we'll use this mutagenic growth as well while we've got the chance. So that puts our opponent down to five. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, it's going to drop a walking ballista? No, no, worm car engine. I suppose walking ballista could have been a problem, um, potentially, but um, yeah. So our opponent plays Worm Coil Engine. Fortunately, as I say, we've uh, got enough to kill over the top, um, so we can just become immense this Storm Chaser Mage. And that's uh, more than enough for the kill. Uh, and we uh, managed to pick up the game, so that, that's obviously the way we want our matchups against Tron to go. Um, our opponent still did fairly well, um, and that Worm Coil Engine would have been a big problem for us um, had we not got off to a, such a fast start. Um, but fortunately we did, and we uh, managed to pick up the win in Game 2. So here we are with Game 3. Um, this hand doesn't have a creature in it, which uh, is going to be a problem, so... Unfortunately, this is going to be a mulligan. Uh, no lander is also no good. 
another low lander, another no lander, and three lands. Um, so, I guess we keep that. Uh, and fourth land on top, which is handy. There's another land. So yeah, as you can probably tell, this game is not going to go our way. Uh, mulling to three and having all those cards be lands is uh, it's not a good start. We did draw too badly in the end. Uh, we draw a Soul Scar Mage and then we draw into a uh, Storm Chaser. Uh, but our opponent's going to have Tron next turn. Uh, and there's Worm Call Engine, so um, unfortunately that wraps uh, that one up. Uh, yeah, a bit of an anti-climax in game three, unfortunately, as we uh, as we mull to Oblivion. Uh, this happens more than I would like, or has done to me anyway, um, with this deck. Um, but I really don't know what we could have done in that situation, really. Um, our seven card hand didn't have any creatures in it. Um, and then we just had a bunch of no landers, so I uh, got pretty unlucky in game three. Uh, in terms of how the Tron matchup is generally, um, I, I'd say I'm not really impressed with it. Um, these sort of hyper aggro style decks really should have a good Tron matchup, um, but I've uh, I've played a few Tron matchups and um, not come out the winning end of either of them. Uh, so. Um, or any of them, uh, to be quite honest. Um, certainly, you would hope uh, that your uh, your match win percentage against Tron, which is kind of a slow deck, um, would be better. Um, certainly, our opponent putting together sort of turn three Tron or whatever is uh, is going to be a problem. But Khan's not all that great against us, um, as long as we've got more than one creature. Um, so that's certainly a positive side, but. I think sometimes the deck's just too slow, um, and then Tron just uh, can take advantage of that and uh, take over the game. So um, yeah, I'm a bit concerned uh, from for this deck's um, Tron uh, win percentage. Um, it didn't seem that great, um, certainly in the, in the uh, couple of matchups that I've played against Tron. Um, but um, maybe that's me. But it didn't didn't really impress me against uh, against this. Uh, this deck.